Hello, my name is Aaron. I'm a senior software engineer at GitLab. In this video, I'm going to walk through setting up the GitLab container registry in a development environment alongside the GitLab development kit. The GitLab registry code is based on the Docker registry, which is now part of the distribution specification, and it has a number of GitLab specific integrations and features. This walkthrough does assume that you have already installed the GDK and its prerequisites. We can also use the same database that the local GitLab instance uses to store our registry metadata. I will be running through this setup on a Mac with Homebrew installed. So first, let's clone the container registry repo. Note the docs and doc GitLab directories. These contain a lot of info from both the upstream repo and for GitLab specific tasks. Most of this video's information comes from these, so I encourage you to look through them as well so you can suit this setup to your particular environment. There's also a good how-to for setting up a local container registry in the GDK docs as well. So here I'm just cloning the registry repo. I will add links to all of these repos in the video description as well. The registry is written in Go, so in order to get started, we'll need to compile the registry command. The registry command provides the main toolchain for interacting with the registry. In fact, it's our primary means of setting up the backing database. So we'll build this by running make bin registry. Now we can run this command. And you see we have a number of subcommands that go along with this, then you can get help on each individual one. But before we can use this tool, we need to create a config file. Inside the registry config directory, there are a few sample config files. There is one called file system, that is for storing the uploaded data and the metadata in the file system. The one that we're actually going to use is the database file system sample config file, which will store the uploaded data on the file system and the metadata inside our database. So I'm going to copy that sample config file into another directory. I'm just going to use my home directory. Outside of the registry repo is good, that way it doesn't accidentally get source controlled. And we'll edit that new config file in place. So as you can see, there is a database section, and this is where we're going to make our changes. The default for this is localhost with the default port and some sample uh, user and password names. Since we're using the GDK installed database, the host is actually going to be the file location of our database installation. And I'm going to use the default for my installation. This will vary based on where you have GDK installed. Uh, but it will be in a directory called PostgreSQL underneath your GDK install directory. We can also delete the username and password fields here since we don't need them for logging in locally. So now we have a config file that points to Postgres, but we still need to create our database. I'm going to open a new window here and go into my GDK installation. And I'm going to make sure that the Postgres service is running by starting that service specifically if it isn't already running and I actually used the wrong service name here, it's actually PostgreSQL. So now that's running, I can start a Postgres console easily by using GDK PSQL. Now I just need to create the registry database using the same name as in the config file, which was registry underscore dev. And now we need to create our schema. We will do this using the registry command. Anytime we use the registry command, we will pass the location of our config file as the last argument. So we'll use database migrate up and then add the location of our config file. And that will run the migrations. These are very similar to Rails database migrations. Now we can check our database and we see that our schema is now in place. Now we can actually start our registry at this point, but in order to interact with it in any way, we're going to have to install the Docker commands and runtime. Now if you're using Docker Desktop, this is already taken care of, but if you're unable to use Docker Desktop, you have some alternatives. 
First, I'm going to install the Docker CLI commands with Homebrew. Easy enough. Now, for the container runtime, there are a handful of options, and these are outlined in the documentation as well. I highly recommend that you read those sections. For this run through, I'm going to use Colima. Colima provides a container D runtime on top of a Linux emulation layer, and it's fairly easy to set up, particularly on a Mac. I'm going to install Colima through Homebrew as well. Colima has quite a few dependencies. It could take a few minutes to install, so I'm going to fast forward through some of this. Now we're almost done, but there are a couple more important steps to take care of, and these might vary depending on your particular setup. First, we know that our registry is running on localhost, but because the container runtime is running inside a Linux VM, it may not be able to reach the registry by the localhost name. One workaround for this is to use our machine's local IP address instead of localhost. You can find this in your network control panel or on the command line like so. For convenience sake, I'm also going to add an entry to my hosts file. Now you may see an entry here for gdk.test already. That can be set up through the gdk installation. I'm just going to add one more entry below using the local IP that I just looked up for registry.test. The other important thing that we need to do is configure our container runtime to allow for insecure registries. That is, we're going to be using unencrypted HTTP to push and pull our registries, which is the default for our development mode. In order for this to work, we need to make an update to the Kalima config. Luckily in Kalima, this is easy. You don't have to hunt for the config file. You can just run Kalima start edit. That will pull up an editor that you can make changes to before the Kalima service starts. If you look through the file, you should see a section on insecure registries. There is an example section here, so that should make it easy to add an entry for our registry host. Once that's done, you can exit the editor and Kalima will start up or restart if it's already running. And now we should be ready to start our registry. We'll go into the registry directory, use the registry serve subcommand with our configuration file, and that will start the registry process. We'll get some logs to standard out. Now we'll run a few test commands to make sure this is working. We'll start with a simple curl just to see that we get a response. We'll fetch a catalog of repositories. Then I will pull down a container from Docker IO. We'll add a tag to that, referencing our local registry. We'll push that image to our registry. and then we'll pull it back down. And now we are ready to start developing with the registry. This is just one walkthrough, but I hope that it's enough to get you started developing with the GitLab registry code. Again, I do encourage you to read the documentation for the registry as well as the GDK docs on working with the registry locally, and I will include those links in the description below. I hope this helps, and thank you for watching.